And there's Lester, <laughs> looking positively radiant. What a very, very happy sight. No one ever has or ever will dominate the derby like Lester Pickett. More than anything else, more than the 11 jockeys championships, 30 English classics, and 5,000 winners worldwide, it's what he did around the horseshoe-shaped helter-skelter challenge of the derby track that defined him. Well, with me now is the most successful man ever at the Epsom track. Lester Pigott, this master tactician, has now won another derby. For five decades, from chubby-faced teenager to wizened old granddad, he ruled the roost at Epsom. The derby is uh, a bit different to the other races. Lester never spoke much more than a mutter, but his deeds were shouts where it mattered. His record nine derby winners are only the outer show of the spell he cast over an event to which his unique talents were so perfectly attuned. For when it comes to courage and balance and strength and timing, Epsom sets the highest of bars. To clear them, Lester added an innate understanding of the horse beneath and a ruthless starving man's hunger that only victory could assuage. Never Say Die in 1954 was his first derby triumph. And what a superb ride by young Pigott, the 18-year-old boy wonder of the turf. He was already the bad boy folk here of the track and bold enough to run over hurdles at Cheltenham three months before. Indeed, study the riding style on Never Say Die and then on his next two derby winners, Crapello and St Paddy. For golden boy Lester Pigott, perhaps the best Epsom rider since the immortal Steve Donahue, it was his third derby win. And you see the stirrup length of the jump jockey that both his father and grand national winning grandfather had been before him. Increasing weight was heading Lester after them, was only avoided by a regime of self-denial, of which the famous cigars and black coffee were just the easy part. Both Crapello and St Paddy were trained in Newmarket by Pigott's first great mentor, Sir Noel Merlis. But by the time of Sir Ivor in 1968, Leicester had switched to the Irish wonder that was Vincent O'Brien. By then, he was already five times champion jockey, and his overseas experience and the introduction of starting stalls had seen his stirrups shorten to give us the coiled up highwayman that lives in the memory. <laughs> For on Sir Ivor, it was robbery at the gallop. And Lester Pigott switching Sir Ivor out from the rails, but gone off with a commanding lead. However many times you replay it, you'll never believe that Sir Ivor will catch the leader combo. Lester never doubted it. Then coming to the line, Sir Ivor caught him, Sir Ivor's the winner. Pigott and O'Brien were the greatest partnership of the 20th, or maybe of any century anywhere. Three more very different derby winners they shared. Five pound on the jet ski, 51. Nijinsky, so majestic in that glorious summer of 1970. Is Nijinsky coming away, an easy winner of the derby. Roberto, trapped against the rail, but only successful through one last whip-cracking salvo from the rider above. And at the post, I think Lester Pigott has just forced Roberto's head in front of Brian Gold. The Minstrel, Lester Pigott versus Willie Carson. The Minstrel against Hot Grove in one of the finest final furlong duels ever seen at Epsom. It's Lester Pickett on the near side, just a winner from Hot Grove. In between, there had been the surprise but beautifully executed victory on the French-trained Ampere. And finally, there was the regal rout with which Tinoso powered home in 1983. Lester Pickett coming home on his ninth derby winner, Tinoso. I couldn't believe it was so easy, you know, it's running away. Of course, there was much, much more to Leicester than just the derby. Spats, suspensions, injuries, private complications, and an unhappy tax scandal which took him to jail, and from which, at 54, he moved on to win the richest race of his whole career just 12 days after his return to the South. Royal Academy does it, and the living legend out of retirement, 54-year-old Lester Piggott. But Epsom is where his spirit belongs. For on a racehorse, Lester Piggott was nothing short of a genius. Thank you very much. Good old Lester Piggott. He could do the things that others couldn't even dream about. 
Well done, Leicester. Congratulations from everybody, from everybody. Thank you. The derby is where that genius shone most bright. His glow should never dim.